good morning good afternoon good evening everyone i hope that all of you are doing well and i hope that all of you are doing great let's get started let me start with my introduction my name is deepak i have 15 plus years of experience in the same field i have designed deployed implemented solution for various organization in addition to that i have certain patents on my name so let's get started without wasting any time and uh, let's take a look at the agenda today today we will learn about what is the cloud computing what is microsoft azure Microsoft Azure portal and the small hands-on. Now moving on before we start with the first topic, let's take a look at the structured learning at Eureka. So if you're going to take a course from us, this is basically going to be the structured learning is going to look like. So in the very first class, you're going to learn about what exactly is Microsoft Azure, its components, how it differs from the other uh, solutions in the cloud that we have. Like we have GCP cloud from Google, we have AWS from Amazon. So how basically it differs from the other cloud services, you know, like which cloud service is better in terms of what you're going to get an entire thorough understanding in this first class with the core components. What are the core terminologies like the resource group? What is the resource group? What is the resource? Uh, what is the subscription each and everything in detail with the practical hands on in the second class? You will learn about Azure virtual machines, the different type of virtual machines that you can create the different type of networking that you have in Azure each and everything you're going to have the, uh, the fair understanding in detail with the practical hands on. In addition to that, in the third class, we will learn about Azure VMSs and availability zone. What exactly is virtual machine scale set and what exactly is availability zone? You're going to get the entire detailed understanding here with a practical hands on. In the fourth class, you will learn about Azure App Services and its different feature. The App Services basically like your logic app, functions app, basically serverless environment, how you can have each and everything in detail. You're going to get a fair understanding uh, in detail with the practical hands on. And then after that, in the next class, you will learn about as your uh, hybrid connectivity and site recovery with the practical hands on. In the next class, you will learn about as your storage solution, the different type of storage solution that is your supports, basically blob, file, queue, table, which one basically is best in what. So each and everything you're going to have the fair understanding in detail with the practical hands on. In the seventh class, you will learn about Azure Kubernetes service. What is a Docker, the Kubernetes service, and uh, you know the different components of it with the practical hands on. And in the next class, you will learn about Azure Active Directory, the role based access control, like how exactly you can have different type of access controls that you have basically available in you know, Azure each and everything in detail. You're going to get in addition to that in the ninth class, you're going to get understanding about Azure monitoring and the inside services. In the last class, you're going to learn about is how to design Azure migration, like what are different components uh, that we should consider while migrating to Azure, like the different tools that is provided by Azure. So you're going to get that fair understanding about everything in detail. And at the end, you're going to become a superhero like this who is going to have a cape. So this is basically the course structure is going to look like that you are going to learn in the entire course. And in the entire webinar, we are going to pick up the topics from here and we basically deliver the things. So uh, like where you can get a fair understanding. So let's move on and let's understand what exactly is cloud computing. So uh, before that, before we talk about cloud computing, what exactly is the cloud? So let's say, for example, if you want to share something like, for example, if you want to share something to your friend, like like a file, your code or something, how you how you're going to share? You're going to take support if there's some drive, some email, right? So let's say you don't have any uh, like internet medium. You don't have any i would say interface in between that how you're going to do like there is no virtual mechanism there is no ip involved there is no i would say wireless connection involved how you're going to do in that case you're going to use the physical wires right so basically if you're going to use the physical wires i'm going to have a dependency that that physical wiring it's going to take a while like if i had to uh, send the data via the physical wires maybe i, I will require the wiring connectivity everywhere in addition to that I can use other methodology where I can try to put the data in any of the external drive like a hard drive thumb drive and I can share the data to that person via that now it's going to have a complication if I'm going to use external drive because uh, here in this case in the case of external drive if I'm going to have uh, it will have a dependency to ship that drive to the recipient now it's easy if the recipients lives nearby what if recipient lives maybe in another country now you have to wait a couple of days or a month it's going to become a nightmare right so in the beginning when the entire cloud concept was introduced uh, we basically started leveraging cl uh, cloud upload it once and use anywhere now if i'm traveling somewhere then in that case i can just uh, upload the data on the cloud and i can access it from anywhere like i'm sitting in india in us wherever the part of country i am in i can just try to use it like there is no dependency of me having that drive uh, like uh, external drive there's no dependency of having the wires or anything that was one of the biggest advantage of the cloud when this, this, this was basically being introduced. 
now what exactly is a cloud computing we can say cloud computing basically is nothing just a use of the remote servers that we have on the internet with the help of which you can store manage process data rather than on your local server or local computer so instead of you are putting the data on your local computer you are just going to put the data directly on the cloud itself uh, basically on the remote servers which are going to be available on the internet where the services are going to be hosted on the internet and you will be able to access that data anywhere anytime without having any kind of hassle that's the biggest advantage of the cloud that we are going to have that's known as cloud computing the couple of benefits that we have in the case of cloud computing is even let me show you uh, let's slide forward now a couple of benefits we are going to have is like broad network access you can access it from anywhere there is no dependency of having wires there's no dependency of having any kind of hardware uh, uh, like tools and everything so you just need basically internet connection you can access it from anywhere other is basically resource pooling if you want to increase the resources decrease the resources you can uh, do it automatically like in the case of on-premise environment like if i have something on my in my data center now if i want to let's say create one virtual machine of 12 gb with ram and one tb of hard drive what will happen in that case if i want to create a virtual machine with that much size then in that case i will require that hardware space for me maybe i require for a month what i what i will do after a month it's going to be a wastage for me right so here in the case of cloud uh, you don't have to worry about it like you can whenever you have the requirement where you want to increase the resources you can increase the resources even on a temporary basis you are going to be charged during that time and you can de decrease the resources plus you can define the condition as well for scaling like I can uh, define the condition wherein I can say that okay, if my CPU utilization is going to go more than 90 percent, double the resources, and once it is going to go then uh, less than 80 percent, decrease the resource count. So all that kind of customization condition we can also define. Other is rep uh, rapid elasticity. You can increase or decrease as per the requirement. It's a measured service. That's one of the good feature about Azure. Uh, it's basically like your unit of electricity which can be measured, like which can be tracked. So Azure basically charge you based on your usage only. It's not going to be like that they are charging you for like unethical for something that you haven't used that's uh, one of the biggest beauty of azure plus uh, it's a uh, on demand self service so whenever you uh, require you can create it whenever you uh, don't require you can close it out now that was all about the cloud computing now what exactly is azure so azure basically is a cloud service which is basically being provided by the microsoft which provides you the freedom to build manage or deploy your applications on a massive scale wherein you can use your favorite tools and the framework uh, and you can access it from anywhere. Now talking about Azure portal that I will show you right now with a small practical. So what I'm going to do here is like let me show you the Azure portal. That's basically my Azure account that I have. I'm using pay as you go service. So wherein where uh, like whenever I'm going to create something I'm going to make any kind of activity Azure is going to charge me for that. Now in the case of Azure the way it works is everything is basically uh, gets created into the resource group. It's a kind of a container wherein you can just uh, define the access like for example in the resource group I have given access to five different people then in that case only those five people are going to have access or apart from that other people are not going to have any access. So every resource group is going to work independently. Now in that resource group you are going to create your resource. Now what are your resources like your virtual machine your web application your websites all these are the resources now let me show you one small example now you must be aware before i move on to that part like if i'm going to uh, like like i'm a developer now in that case i have to develop a website now what i will require for that a server where i'm going to host my database and is or apache tomcat any of the web server that i'm going to have i have to write the code i have to integrate then i'm going to make it online like maybe with the help of a different tools i have which are available in the market that you're going to learn throughout the course with the help of them you can make it online in the case of azure you don't have to get into any kind of hassle you just have to focus on your uh, product itself which is your web application now let's take a look i had to create a web application you're going to see that how simple and sweet it is with the help of azure without having any kind of hassle i can create a web application i can go live directly now if i'm a developer i can develop and put the code directly now like i said in the case of azure everything is a resource group right now in my resource group i have nothing because i have i have not created anything out let's say i'm going to create a resource group with the name demo now this is the name of a subscription wherein i'm going to be charged for this subscription only that's why i'm going to have only one subscription but i can have multiple resource group so here one resource group is going to be created now as you can see on my screen i got a notification that this resource group has been created now if i'm going to go on my home screen 
now i will be able to see that one resource group has been created now what i want is i want my use case is that i want to basically create a web application and i want to go live directly like you see portal to azure.com is a page here i want to let's say see um, basically i want to create one website with the name etweka demo testing one two three that's the url name i want to use and i want to go live directly let's take a look how can i do now here i'm going to create a resource remember i'm going to create a resource not a resource group because resource group is something that i have already created now here in this case i'm going to select the resource group as demo and i'm going to give the name like i said i want to keep the name as etweka testing123 now i'm going to use the latest on times tag because latest is always the greatest now it's going to show you at the the cost at the end how much i'm going to be charged you see it's loading the price now if I'm going to create this resource, I'm going to keep it as it is, like for demonstration purpose. Still, then also I'm going to be charged 5,259.30 every month. So this is the cost I'm going to be charged till the time I'm going to use it. This cost is basically on a monthly basis. Now, if I'm going to uh, cancel it, delete it, then I'm going to be charged on pro rata basis. Now let's create it out. Now here we go the resource has been created now here if i'm going to go to the resource now if i'm going to click on this url you will be able to browse to this site directly it's going to be available for all of you directly only so here the advantage is that like i don't have to waste the time in uh, creating an internal mapping into external deciding the external ip address everything is going to be done automatically and i can go live here i can if i have my code here i can just simply go i can deploy my code and i can work on it or if i want i want to change the port here which is being in use i want to basically change the certificate this uh, digital certificate which is being in use i can customize it entire settings out from here now since you are accessing this site here like if i'm going to stop it from here directly because i'm the admin i will have the entire central control so if i'm going to stop and if i'm going to run you see you're going to get this error now I can start it out. It will be accessible to all of you. It will take a moment to come up. You see now it's up and running. Now let's say if I I've realized that I don't want to really, uh, use this resource. So you remember this resource is created under demo resource group that I have. So here I can go directly. And I can delete this entire resource group out. Then entire resource group is going to be deleted. Now, once this is de deleted, you will be able to see the difference here. That um, entire like website is not going to be available. Let me show you. Allow this to delete. Now you see this bar is going on right now. So it's deleting. It will take a moment to get it deleted. Now, if I go to resource groups, you will be able to see everything is empty. Now, if I'm going to refresh the page here, the site is not going to be available. Now, reason is that now we got a different error. Even though the site is not available, we got the error the site can't be reached. This is because, like, uh, the reason why it's happening because the site, like now that we are going to have, has been deleted. If the site could have been there, if like if the website was up and running, then it's going to be say, you know, give the error like a forbidden error, or, or, and so. Here in this case, the entire site has been deleted. Now that's why we are getting this kind of error. So here in this case, like instead of deleting the entire resource group one by one, we have that flexibility that we can delete the entire resource at the same time. Like here in this case, if I have created like it's like that uh, parent child relationship. So if you have deleted the root, the child is already going to be deleted. Now if I, I have that flexibility, if, if I want, I could have deleted like one resource at a time instead of deleting all. That I can do, but if I realize that you know the entire group that I created was for testing only, then in that case the entire group is going to be deleted without having any kind of hassle. See here. Now I hope that you guys got a fair understanding. Okay, I think we can wrap up the session for today. I hope that you have learned a lot and you have uh, enjoyed a lot today. 
Thank you so much.